sizing tap conductors from distribution splitters. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at the section 14 rules, specifically 14100, in how we determine the tap conductor size when we terminate it to a distribution splitter. Now, first off, we need to understand what a tap conductor is. And a tap conductor is where we do not have any overcurrent protection on the conductor, or there's a reduction in size without overcurrent protection. Largely in the electrical industry, this has already been accomplished by use of panel boards with breakers. And so in the illustration below, all of the conductors are protected by breakers at the point where current is applied, and therefore they are not tap conductors. Even on larger central distribution panels, such as this one, all of the conductors happen to be protected by the breakers at the point where current is applied. It's only when we get into installations like this that we have to start determining what size the tap conductors will be because we're using a splitter. A splitter is something where we're permitted to reduce the size of the conductor without having an overcurrent in there to protect it. And due to that, they're typically fairly short or restricted in length and encased in metal or protective armored cable. So in this illustration, we can see here, the splitter, which is supplying the two disconnects above with power, will have wires that come off and terminate to the line side terminals of each of these disconnects. The length of that conductor and the size of it will be dictated by 14100. Here we can easily see the size difference between the incoming wires, which in this case could be fairly large, looks like parallel, maybe 500 KC mil, and the distribution block itself, or splitter block, block, which allows for a much smaller conductor to come off. We can see that we've got A, B, C, and a neutral terminating in this disconnect. And as always, the top side is the line side of the disconnect, not the bottom. Conductors that are reduced in size without proper overcurrent protection for the reduced current carrying ability are referred to as the tap conductor. The most common example is at the distribution splitter that we just looked at, where a large overcurrent protected feeder conductor terminates at the lug. The splitter lug is simply a metallic connection point for all conductors of the same phase. Smaller conductors can then be connected to the splitter lug and um, which will supply the line side of a different fused or unfused disconnect. 14100 discusses how we deal with this situation. Essentially, 14100 starts with the statement that all conductors need to have an overcurrent to protect them at the point of their supply and every time that the wire size is reduced. After they state, make that statement, they then start into a lengthy process of discussing different exceptions. 14100A is the first exception. Conductors oversized to prevent line drop. No special attention is required in this installation. And we can see here that someone has chosen to use a significantly larger conductor for this portion of the run simply to account, uh, accom accommodate rather line drop. Now at this point, to here, we're going from a large conductor to a small conductor, and the rule states there's no additional overcurrent protection required because we know that this breaker here already adequately protects the smaller size conductor, which terminates at the load. 14100B and 14100C are the two tap conductor rules that we use with splitter installations. The difference between 14100 B and C is that B is for tap conductors with a maximum length of three meters. Now, as you read through the rule, it can be rather confusing to determine exactly what uh, um, ratings should be used in order to determine the tap conductor opacity. And so be very, very clear as we look at this following example. The tap conductor that is three meters in length or shorter is the larger amperage value of these two here. The load to be supplied or the switchboard or panel amperage rating. Whichever one is larger will then be the minimum tap conductor opacity. And we would then go and size that conductor to this minimum conductor opacity. 
Now keep in mind the tap must not exceed three meters. It cannot extend beyond the device it supplies and it must use an enclosed wiring method. So there are three separate calculations which typically need to take place for a, a standard distribution tap installation. The order is important as the branch circuit ratings must be known prior to the tap being sized. Step one, branch circuit conductor sized to carry load. Step two, branch circuit over current sized to protect branch circuit conductor. And step three, tap conductor sized according to 14100B. Now don't worry, we're gonna go through an example where this is made very clear. Now what's extremely important about this tap conductor is that you pay close attention to the wording. The rule specifies the opacity of the switch is to be used, not the overcurrent. When a fuse disconnect is installed, the disconnect amperage rating will be referred to. That is the switch. Alternatively, if an unfused disconnect, alternatively, an unfused disconnect switch could be installed. If a single breaker enclosure or panel board is used, then the rating of the overcurrent is taken for sizing purposes. And this is because a breaker is both a disconnect and an overcurrent. So let's take a look at an example. So here's a classic example where you have a huge feeder from a large overcurrent, a splitter, a tap conductor, a fusible disconnect, a branch circuit wire, and a load. So remember, we said the first step is to first determine if you're given the load, calculate the size of the conductor that is necessary to supply it. So the branch circuit conductor is sized based on 50 amps. These are non-continuous loads. We go to 75 degree column of table two, and we end up with a number eight good for 50 amps. So we're starting here and we work our way back to the tap conductor. Second step, branch circuit overcurrent sized to the number 850 amp. Remember the overcurrent is always sized to the wire unless we have rules that specifically determine the size of the overcurrent for us. That means we go and we take the 50 amp rating of the ADOG to table 13 and we size an overcurrent for it, which is 50 amps. Now this is a fusible disconnect, which means that it needs a disconnect to hold the fuse. Standard fusible disconnects come in sizes of 15, 30, 60, 100, 200, 400, 600, so on and so forth. We need a 60 amp disconnect. So now we look at the tap conductor rule and 14100B says the tap conductor is sized to the greater of either load amps or the switch controlling the load. Remember, the switch controlling the load is right here. That is the fusible disconnect, which is rated 60 amps. Tap conductor size to the disconnect amperage in this case, because the disconnect is larger than what the load amps is, 60 amps. So we take the 60 amps to the 75 degree column of table two, and we end up with the number six aug, good for 65 amps. This is our tap conductor located right here. Let's look at another example. Again, we start at the load and work our way back. This is a funny example because it's a very low, low amperage load. It's 25 amps and we have no information about what type of load it is. Due to that, the size of the wire and the size of the overcurrent is somewhat already determined for us from 14104 sub rule two. This rule states that if we do not know the type of load that is being utilized with these smaller gauge size wires, that their amperage is restricted by a set of 30 or 20 or 15 amp overcurrents. So 15 amp for a 14 gauge, 20 amp for 12 gauge and 30 amp for 10 gauge. Due to that, we have a number 10 aug supplying the 25 amp load with a 30 amp fuse and a 30 amp disconnect. We've satisfied all three of these steps and now the tap conductor size to either the load amps or the switch controlling the load. And in this case, 
we're sizing it again to the disconnect at 30 amps. We take that to 75 degree column table two, we end up with a number 10. Third example, we have a 225 amp load. We size the branch circuit conductor from table two as a four aught, good for 230 amps. The overcurrent is sized to the amperage of the fuse, which gives us a, or amperage of the branch circuit, which gives us 250 amps. A 400 amp disconnect is then selected to switch on and off the 250 amp fuse. Again, the tap conductor is sized to the load amps or the switch controlling the load. The switch controlling the load is again the disconnect, meaning that we are sizing it to 400 amps, giving us a 600 KC mil conductor good for 420 amps. And finally, last example, this is a 200 amp panel board with a 200 amp breaker. Now the 200 amp panel board has no branch circuit conductor. The tap conductor is terminating right to the line side of that 200 amp breaker, which thereby supplies the panel board. The branch circuit over current is 200 amps. This would also be considered, considered the first switch controlling the load. So we look at the tap conductor size to the load amps or the switch controlling the load. Really, they're both gonna be the same. It's a 200 amp panel and a 200 amp breaker. That means our, disc, our tap conductor size based on 200. We go to table two, number three ought, good for 200 amps. Well, let's take a look at longer tap conductors. Tap conductors that are between 3.1 and seven and a half meters are then utilized with 14100 subrural C. You'll notice that the way in which we determine the minimum tap conductor opacity is slightly different in that we are now working it out based on one third of the feeder conductor amps and the overcurrent amps for the branch circuit. Now, although not specifically stated within the rule, this is considered to be used only when the tap conductor exceeds three meters in length. So it's zero to three meters, we use 14100B, 3.1 to seven and a half meters, we use 14100C. The same process we will go through, branch circuit conductor size to carry the load, branch circuit overcurrent size to protect the branch circuit conductor, and then the tap conductor will be sized. The phrasing of the rule identifies the overcurrent amperage to be considered when sizing the tap conductor, not the branch circuit switch outlined in the previous rule. So that's a little bit different. This amperage is then compared to one third of the feeder conductor ampacity. The larger of the two values is the minimum ampacity for the tap conductor. Let's take a look at our first example. So we first start over here, 50 amp load. We size the wire, which is number eight aug, and then we size the fuse to the wire, 50 amp. We size the disconnect to the fuse, that gives us a 60 amp disconnect. On the other side, I have a 500 amp main with 900 KC mil feeder. So I'm going to be immediately working out what one third is of this feeder conductor, because I know that my tap conductor rule will depend on it. So here's my first three steps. We got our fuse, our disconnect, all of that stuff done. Now we're going to size the tap conductor. It is the larger of the branch circuit over current device or one third of the feeder amps. So the uh, branch circuit over current is 50 amps right here. And one third of the feeder is right here, 173.3, obviously. 173.3 is larger, and therefore it is used to size the tap conductor, which will supply the disconnect. We take it to table two, and we end up with a number two watt, good for 175 amps. In this example, 25 amp load with a number 10 aug branch circuit conductor, 30 amp fuse with a 30 amp disconnect. Again, we have a large feeder coming in, and due to the length of this tap conductor, we need to take one third of it, which is the 173.3. .3.
the tap conductor is sized to the larger of the branch circuit over current or one third of the feeder. One third of the feeder again becomes the required size and you can start to see that depending on the combination of equipment and feeders that I have, it may become a bit of a challenge to terminate the tap conductors into the line side of your disconnect. Now for those situations, there are additional uh, adapter lugs that can be purchased and terminated into the existing lugs dependent on what manufacturer is being used. Just consider 30 amp disconnect, number two watt conductors. Ooh, that'd be tough to stuff those in. Finally, example seven, a 225 amp load. The branch circuit conductor is then sized, number four odd, good for 230, all the way back to the fuse, 250 amps was based on the 230 amps of the number four odd, 400 amp disconnect. Now we again need to look at the 250 amps of the fuse and the 173, which is one third of the feeder. In this situation, uh, the branch over current is larger at 250 amps, which means a 250 KC mill, good for 255 amps. This is an example to show what would happen in an installation if an installer were to mistakenly install a conductor that exceeded seven and a half meters in length and consider it a tap conductor. So here we've got a listed distance of eight meters, which exceeds the seven and a half meters listed as maximum in 14100. It is no longer considered a tap conductor. And because of that, no reduction in size is permitted. If someone were to do this installation, the conductor size would have to remain identical to the feeder conductor, thereby requiring a 900 KC mill to be installed. This is the obvious reason why we attempt to always ensure that the tap conductors are seven and a half meters in length and shorter. It also goes to explain why electrical rooms can look so ridiculously crowded and cramped it's not just because we want everything to fit on one wall, it's also because we want to limit the longest conductor to the disconnect to seven and a half meters to ensure that we can still treat it as a tap.